So you're getting ready to put up that website or you've got one already, but you're looking here for help. Hey, that's a great thing. No matter which scenario is yours, you probably feel a little bit like the people in this next video. It's crazy. It's confusing. But you know what? Web design is a lot like building a plane in the sky. Some people like to climb mountains. I like to build planes in the air. I grew up wanting to be on a wing, wanting to be up this high. Sometimes the temperature up at altitude will reach 60 below. It's brisk, it's refreshing. You never know what you're going to come across up here. Canadian geese, mallards, owls. These people back here, that's why I come to work. That's why I build airplanes in the sky. We're not just building a plane here. We're building a dream. I love this job. I do a lot of things up here. When I look over there and I see that little kid, and I look in his eyes, I saw the things I need. To really understand the process of building or maintaining your website then, you really need to start at the beginning. So we won't be building planes in the sky for too long. In this session, we're going to give you some of the definitions that are important. Again, if you've come from a Dreamweaver or a front page background, content management systems are really different. All right, let's dive in. So what is Drupal? Well, when you ask that question, you're really asking the question, what is a content management system, or CMS for short? In its most basic form, it's a software platform that aids in the management of content on a website. A slightly better definition is it's a software application that makes it possible for non-technical users to publish content to a website. It serves as a store for a wide range of information assets, text, images, databases, videos, etc., etc. Let's take a look at what a content management system looks like. A CMS splits all of your website into basically three different aspects or three different areas. First is content. It's what you put into your site. The creative writing, the editing, maybe some HTML, maybe some PHP, CSS, whatever goes into your content items, those are all stored in a database. You have to think of it like three almost separate entities instead of the old way of writing HTML where each page was constructed and was contained in a single file. There are no pages in a Drupal website. There are content items that are stored in a database. The next area is the creative design, the site design, page layout, all of those kinds of things. Those are actually separate from the content itself. The advantage that this gives us is that when you want to change the look and feel of your site, it's just a matter of uploading and enabling a new theme. And your entire site, or any portion of it, changes without you ever editing the content or the actual pages of your site, which if you remember, don't actually exist. They're stored in a database. The last thing that a content management system gives you is the technical design. This is the programming, the database, the PHP, Ajax, JavaScript, and this is what Drupal gives you. Drupal creates all the necessary code to produce the web pages that access your content and deliver it with your design. But all three of these things are separate. So when Drupal has an update, you don't have to worry about your content or your design because it's only the core files that are being updated. When you want to change your design, you don't have to actually physically change any code because the two are separate. Similarly, when you want to change your content, you don't need to change your design, and Drupal creates brand new pages or nodes every time somebody loads your website. So in its very essence, that's what a content management system is. The advantages are endless, but again, just to recap, one, you don't have to change your design when you change your content. You don't have to change your content when you change your design. And when you update your software that runs your website, it does so without changing either of the others. A CMS gives you incredible flexibility in your web design. All right, so how does Drupal work? Well, it's free, and that's possible because of all of the volunteers that work for Drupal businesses that contribute to Drupal. 
And this is really an amazing thing in today's world. Drupal is free, but Drupal sites are often not. In fact, you can pay a lot of money for a Drupal site simply because of how awesome, how extensible, how scalable, and how incredible Drupal is as a content management system. Well, who are the businesses behind Drupal? Drupal is still led by its founder, and his company, Acquia, runs much of Drupal's products, services, and support. Drupal is a misspelling of drop in Dutch, and that explains the really cool logos. Well, who uses Drupal? The White House uses Drupal. The Department of Commerce uses Drupal. The Department of Education uses Drupal. The U.S. House of Representatives are starting to use Drupal as of this recording. The Grammy Awards, Christina Aguilera, Major League Soccer, stars and sports of all kinds use Drupal. And as you've seen from the slides that we just showed, a Drupal site can look just about any way you want it. Well, there's no false promises with Drupal. It is easier than starting from scratch. It's easier than some of the crazy difficult content management systems that are out there. But it has a steep learning curve. In fact, somebody depicted it this way. If ModX, WordPress, and Joomla are at the bottom, well then, <laughs> Drupal is definitely more difficult to learn. Bodies falling off of cliffs. By the end of this course, you're going to have a pretty good handle on the basics of Drupal. But when you go beyond that, say developing modules or developing complex Drupal sites, the learning curve gets pretty steep. Now we talk more about that in our live intermediate class and I'd encourage you to look at that possibility once you finish this course. The sites can be done more quickly but good sites still take time. Drupal sites can be cheaper than other content management systems and building a site from scratch but they can still be quite expensive because there are so many more options and the ability to do custom work is really built in to Drupal. Drupal isn't right for every site. If you're running a simple blog, let me encourage you to stop and just go use WordPress. WordPress is by far the best blogging platform on the planet and it's the most easy one to use if that's all you're doing. Joomla is easier but it offers a lot less flexibility than Drupal does. So if you're not running a blog and you need content items or nodes or pages that have different content types in them, so a title and a body isn't going to do it for you, then really Drupal is exactly what you need. Why Drupal 7? Well, 5 was launched in 2007 and it's pretty much done. Drupal 6 launched in 2008. About 95% of the Drupal sites out there are using 6, but it's the past, not the future. Drupal 7 was launched in early 2011 and it's really becoming the de facto standard. Well, that's it for what is a CMS and what is Drupal. One last thing. If you run into questions, if you have thoughts, if you get confused, don't forget, use the forums here at OS Training. That's what we're here for.